Hello everyone, it's Mark. I am the Sanderson Collector, and I am here today to tell you the difference between an edition, a printing, and a state of a book. And we are going to go over in detail the differences between each of these three terms and what makes a book a first edition, a first printing, and a first state, which makes it the most collectible book possible. All of the examples that I am going to be showing today will be Brandon Sanderson books. However, the terminology that I am using is generally accepted book collecting terminology, no matter what author you're collecting. And so, even if you're not directly a Sanderson collector, I hope that you find this video useful. The first term to define is the edition of a book. And an edition of a book is typically when the publisher changes the ISBN of the book, they consider it a new edition. You can see that here with the Mistborn Trade paperbacks that I have here. The first one is the original YA trade paperback, and if we look at the copyright page right here, it says, First Tor Teen Trade Paperback Edition, May 2014. And it is considered the first edition of this type, and when they put out the new edition, this trade paperback this year, they said on the copyright page that this is the second trade paperback edition in 2023. Because it is a brand new edition, new size, new ISBN, everything, the publisher is considering that a new edition of a book. For our purposes, edition and ISBN are interchangeable. However, that is not always enough to figure out exactly which book you are getting. Here are a few examples of where ISBN is not enough and you have to look at the printing of a book. Both of these are considered the first edition of Words of Radiance in US hardcover. This one is a first printing and this one is a 12th printing. What printing is, is a run of the book that is sent off to the printer, generally printed up, all at once and then distributed from the publisher's warehouse out to the public before they go back and get another print run of the book. You can tell this normally on US books by the number line on the copyright page. The lowest number except for a zero on that copyright line will tell you what printing a book is. So this book is a first printing from the very first print run. And this one here, with the different cover font and everything, is a 12th printing. If you look at the number line, the lowest number there is a 12, and that is how we know this book is a 12th printing. And yes, books will change, say, the kind of paper that's used, the font that is used on the cover, and so on, within an edition, and nothing else will change with the ISBN of the book, and the publisher still considers it a first edition. As you see on the copyright page here, it still says first edition, March 2014. They did not denote that this was a later edition of Words of Radiance. Changes between printings are not necessarily limited to just the font and small changes on the cover. Books can change their cover art entirely. Both of these books have the same ISBN you can see here on the back that it is the same for these two editions of the U.S. mass market paperback. This one is a first printing of that paperback, as we can see by the number line here, and this one is a fifth printing, so somewhere in between the first and fifth printings of the U.S. paperback for Mistborn, they changed cover art from the John Foster cover to the Chris McGrath cover, they do not consider it a new edition. The copyright page on this one still says first mass market edition. So this is two different printings of the book that are massively different. However, the edition is still considered the same. Another instance where they have done this is The Rhythmatist. The first 13 printings used the original hardcover cover for the USYA trade paperback of The Rhythmatist. The 14th printing and onward have used this new cover, which we originally saw on the pocket hardcover. They are still the same edition, same ISBN, different printings, one through 13 are like this, 14 and on are like this. So that is why you have to check at the very minimum the printing of a book 
in order to know which kind of book you're going to get even within the same edition or the same ISBN. When something major changes, like the cover here or the cover here, or even just the font or spine width here, we call that a change in the state of a book. A set of books that are the same state are identical in every reasonable way. This does not include variations for, you know, if a print of a book got cut slightly higher or lower, or if a book was misprinted, that's not its own state. It's a version of one state of the book that's just a misprint or slightly different because of the printing process. Other things that can denote a different state of a book include the change on the cover price of the book or changes to things like the bibliography at the front of the book that says what other books that author has written. The one thing that, at least for our community, we don't consider to change the state of the book is just if it moves to a new printing. So if this changed from 12th printing to 13th printing and nothing at all else in the book changed, we would consider it the same state of the book. However, these two books are very definitely different states of the book. 99% of the time, state of the book will only change between print runs because a book is sent off to be printed. All the copies of the book are printed with one file from the publisher, and then if the publisher wants to make tweaks, they send it back for a new print run. However, there are a few rare occasions that we have seen for Brandon books where this is not the case. The first example is the U.S. hardcover of Steelheart. There are six different first editions of that hardcover. This one is the standard edition. These four are the Walmart, Target, Barnes & Noble, and Books A Million editions that came out at the same time. Each of them has a little insert in the back with an epic file or an annotated first chapter of the book. And then later they re-released the book. What they did is they took the original hardcovers, they took the dust jacket off of them, and they put a new dust jacket on it with the new cover. And it is still a first printing of the book. Inside the dust jacket, the book is identical. I have checked very thoroughly for this. It even still has the same ISBN as you can see here on the back of the book, and it is still considered a first edition, first printing. However, all of these are different states of the first edition, first printing of Steelheart. Five of them share the same ISBN. One of the editions, I believe it is the Walmart edition, has a different ISBN, but the Barnes & Noble, Books A Million, and Target editions share the same edition as the regular hardcover, and the new cover on the hardcover that was released later, but is still a first printing first edition. That was a case where there were simply separate types of the book released intentionally by the publisher. However, the other examples are not as intentional. The Way of Kings in Leatherbound has three different states within the first printing. I have done a detailed video on the differences between those, which you can check out right up here if you would like all the details. For now, I'm just going to say, yes, there's three different states of the first printing. Because Dragonsteel made tweaks to the book while the printer was going through and printing these up, and those tweaks got integrated in the later books that got printed. However, they are all still with the full number line, and so they are all still considered the first printing of this book. In my opinion, the most egregious case of this happening is the Oathbringer UK mass market paperbacks. On these, they originally released them with a black spine, which did not match the series at all, got a lot of pushback, and came out and re-released it with a white spine for the two split parts of this paperback. All of these books right here are first edition, first printings. They didn't change the ISBN. They didn't change the copyright page. All they did is change the spine on the book so that it was white instead of black and considered it still part of that first print run. This one frustrates me because it really should be considered at the very least a second printing because I know these came out and then they got backlash and then they went back and printed more, but 
The Lance did not want to admit they'd done anything wrong, and they are trying to pass these off as first printing. So there is a very weird example of the state changing within a print run for a book. The last example I have for you today is possibly the most subtle. It is the U.S. hardcover release of Oathbringer. We noticed this just because I was nitpicking on details to put on my collecting website. If you look at the copyright page of this first printing, this number line goes 10987654321 and starts with the number 10. However, other first printings of the book, which came from other distributors at the exact same time, have a number line that looks like this, has a zero at the beginning instead of a 10. The number lines are different. We have found no other differences between these two editions of the book. We don't know what happened with this. We suspect that Tor used two different printing companies to print up more copies of the book for distribution to different parts of the United States and sent a very slightly different file to the two companies. We have not been able to find any other differences between them. And so these are the 10 line and the zero line states of the first printing of the U.S. Oathbringer hardcover. Unique to this, we consider both of these true firsts because they were released at the same time and we have no real distinction between which one came out first. For other things like the Oathbringer paperbacks, the Black Spine definitely came out first and this spine came out later. For The Way of Kings Leatherbound, you can check out my video. First state came out first, second state came out second, third state came out third. That is how those work. And that concludes your in-depth look at what it means to be an edition or ISBN of a book, what a printing of a book is, the print run that the publisher does, and what a state of a book is, which does not necessarily correspond to the print run for a book because these are two different states of the same printing. I hope you have enjoyed your trip through editions, printings, and states of books, and at the very least, I hope you found it educational. For another educational tidbit, Last week's trivia question was, what is the only non-Stormlight Sanderson book that has been graced by a Michael Whelan cover? And the answer is A Memory of Light. The original covers for the Wheel of Time series were all done by Daryl K. Sweet. However, he unfortunately passed away before finishing his cover art for A Memory of Light. And so Michael Whelan took over and finished the series for him with this painting and that is the only non-Stormlight Sanderson book that has gotten a Michael Whelan cover at this time. I believe two people got the answer to this one right in the comments for last week, so congratulations to y'all if you got it correct. For this week's trivia question, where was the story I Hate Dragons published in physical form, and what major error did the publisher make when inserting Brandon's story. If I missed any details in today's video, or you just want to let me know how much you appreciated it, please leave me a comment below. If you found it educational or entertaining, leave me a like. If you want to catch future Sanderson Collecting videos, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. I will be back next week with another Sanderson Collecting video and the answer to this week's trivia question. I will see you then. Until then, happy collecting.